I'm going to fight the global war on terror. I'm going after bad people, evil people. When I get a chance to stamp out evil in this world, I love that. Sorry. I love hunting down bad guys and ending them. Driving from the base down into a city, there's this weird mix of excitement, fear, and also an odd serenity. We wanted to make a statement, hence the choice to use a detonator and a bomb. You had Al-Qaeda on every street corner. As soon as the vehicle stops, the doors open, and it's showtime. Would you say that it was a successful operation? Yes. Yemen's armed factions have an impact throughout the Middle East and beyond, most recently as the Houthi rebel group attacks ships in the Red Sea. The U.S. military launched another airstrike in Yemen. The U.S. and U.K. hit around 30 sites across Yemen. This film is about the complex roles Western and regional powers have played in Yemen's war. And the story begins with an assassination mission. Isaac Gilmore is a former Navy SEAL who later became second in command of a private U.S. military firm called Spear Operations Group. Yeah, me too. I want to be pretty. When I first met him in 2020, human rights lawyers were trying to prosecute Spear for war crimes. This is the first time anyone from Spear has spoken on camera. One of the reasons that I agreed to participate in this and be part of this documentary is to be very clear about what we're doing and why. This isn't, you know, innocent until proven guilty. It's war. And so you have intelligence, and then you act on it. In December 2015, Spear Group was hired by the UAE to carry out assassinations in Yemen. We met with the appropriate bodies within the UAE government at the Emirati army base. The pitch was to put pressure on ISIS and Al-Qaeda in the state of Yemen and make sure that it didn't become another chaotic hub of terrorist activity, especially with the proximity to the Horn of Africa. In 2015, Yemen was gripped by fighting on several fronts. A rebel group called the Houthis had taken over the capital Sana'a. They also briefly held Aden before a Saudi UAE-led coalition, backed by the US and the UK, recaptured the city. Al-Qaeda had long been a presence in the south and were now gaining territory. The US feared they might plan terrorist operations beyond Yemen's borders. The UAE took over security for southern Yemen and became the US's main counter-terrorism ally in the region. How much were you offered for this operation? 1.5 million per month. The next step was then to recruit guys not every guy would be comfortable with doing something that was essentially somewhat in the gray area. And so we had to find the right people with the right mentality. Ready, three, two, one, execute. Dale Comstock yeah. spent decades in the US Special Forces before becoming a mercenary. All right, three, collapse on us. He now runs combat training courses for civilians. Did you enjoy your time in Yemen? Um, honestly, no. Why would anybody want to do anything in Yemen? It's, I mean, you've been there. It's a freaking hellhole. But we weren't there to go to Club Med, you know? We had a job to do, and that's just what soldiers do. You can suck it up. Look, in, in Yemen, you know this as, as I do, Al-Qaeda, everywhere. I've had Al-Qaeda within inches of me, inches of me. Everything that we did, we made sure we did the right thing. If we were going to target somebody uh, that was on this list, then we made sure that, in our minds, 
that we're not gonna go out and murder somebody because this guy doesn't like that guy. We would do our own due diligence, do our own background checks on the guys, and if we felt like, yeah, okay, he's, he's a legitimate target, we're good to go. Who gave you the targets? We received the target intelligence from the UA government. The initial operation was targeting an al Islam leader. al Islam is the Yemeni branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. قبل الوقت المحدد لي يمكن بنص ساعة أنا خرجت يمكن تسعة وأربعين دقيقة تسعة وخمسة وأربعين دقيقة يعني وصلت إلى عند البيت سمعت انفجار اتصلوا بي بعض الزملاء بعضهم أعضاء مجلس النواب اتصلوا عليا يقول لي سلامات سلامات I was scared. I don't have a problem. I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. So, I'm sure that in the same time, there was a sign in one of the events. In one of the events, there was a sign in the car. In this event, I knew that I was the leader. Did you know that you were the leader? 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 أنا أريد أن أسأل ما هو المسوى الأخلاقي والقانون الذي يجيب أبهم من أطراف المحيط ليقتلون في في عدن يعني لأي شيء لأي دم يعني أنصاف fled Yemen after the attack and now lives in exile. On Ansaf Mayu in particular, what was it that made you decide that he is a terrorist? Um, well, there's couple things. One, we already know that he was being financed by the Muslim Brotherhood, and I can tie it all together. So the but the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood aren't, they're not a terrorist organization. Yeah they, are. yeah, they are. The United States government doesn't believe the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist uh, organization. Oh, yeah, they did. At one point, they did. Yes, they did. If my handlers say, here's the intelligence, this is the target, and this is why, who am I to question? I'm a soldier for you. Roger that. And your handlers are the UAE? Yeah, they're the client. Yeah, they're the client. Ansaf's party, Al-Islah, or the Reform Party, is one of the biggest political organizations in Yemen. Its policies are inspired by the Muslim Brotherhood, a popular international Islamist movement. The Muslim Brotherhood is banned in several countries, including the UAE, where their political activism and support for elections is seen as a threat to the rule of the royal family. But the U.S. has never classified the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Hey, how are you? Legal action group Reprieve has been tracking assassinations in southern Yemen. What you see here is basically tens and tens of assassinations. Between 2015 and 2018, they've counted 102. They've all followed the same pattern placing IED bombs on uh, doors or on cars, and then someone comes after and starts uh, shooting the individual. If you see then here, you see a surge in assassinations that are happening throughout 2016. This happens after the arrival of Spears into Yemen. 25 of these assassinations took place during the months that Isaac spent in Yemen. How many targets did you execute not answering. By early 2016, Dale and Isaac's time with Spear was coming to an end. But the assassinations continued. ضحايا بالمئات سياسيون ومثقفون دعاة وخطباء أساتذة ونشطاء. It was not until 2018 when we started to pinpoint that actually this is part of a systematic targeting policy. You have this chaotic situation where everyone can name anyone a terrorist and start uh, going after them. These are extrajudicial killings. We've seen documents that appear to show that Spear Group continued to receive payments from the UAE until 2020. A senior Yemeni army officer from Aden, who worked directly with the UAE, tells us what Spear was doing. السبير اوبريشن جروب تم استخدامهم للقيام بعمليات استهداف بشكل مباشر 
لكن فيما بعد تم تحويل برنامجهم إلى تدريب قاموا بتدريب بعض الضباط الإماراتيين وقادة الخلايا هؤلاء هم من قاموا بدورهم بتدريب العناصر المحلية للقيام بعمليات الاستهداف بعد ما بدأوا يدربوا خلايا محلية هل زادت كمية الاغتيالات في عدن؟ أكيد زادت وتيرة الاغتيالات في عدن بشكل مهول After months of trying, I've managed to obtain a UAE kill list. It's from 2018 and is seven pages long. It was leaked by a source who was working with the Emiratis and was horrified by the names he saw on the list. It includes this woman, Hudel Sarari. <laughs> Huda is a lawyer who was in Geneva to receive an award for her work investigating the UAE human rights abuses in Yemen. Ms. Huda Al-Sarari. <laughs> يعني كنت أطلع مثلاً في 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 قنوات المحلية وأتكلم يعني كنت أتعرض لكم تهديدات قد تعرضني للقتل. In the end, it wasn't Huda who was attacked. It was her son. أود أن أهدي هذه الجائزة إلى روح ولدي محسن. لقد كان دائماً مساعداً ومقرباً إلى قلبي. لهذا ما أقول لك كان كثير ضحك نحن في البيت لأن الحب الحقيقي فكان مرة فكاهي لهذا كانوا الناس كلها تحبه لأنه كان يعمل حركات يسوي حركات طبعا في هذاك اليوم هو يعني كنت في البيت محسن خرج مع مجموعة من أصحابه تم إصابة لقى النار عليه إصابة محسن كانت من الأمام الرصاصة دخلت من الأمام يعني ما كانش نتيجة اشتباكات أو كانت الرصاصة طائشة هي كانت يعني كأنه متعمد After a month in intensive care محسن died He was 18 Eyewitnesses told the prosecutor that they recognized the gunman as a member of a counter-terrorism unit funded by the UAE. But nobody was charged. I was بس إنه بعد ما ما رجعت تاني مرة استعدت نشاطي بدأت أتلقى تهديدات من أول وجديد وهذا ما كفائكش يعني هل تشتي زيادة إنه يموت ابنك التاني عشان تتراجعي؟ Huda now lives in exile. She's still in fear of her life. U.S. laws on mercenaries are unclear. And to date, Spear hasn't been prosecuted for its role in the UAE's assassination program. I went to meet Isaac again. Did you feel like the operation you took part of was legal? Yes. Is that because there was some sort of nod from Washington? No, it's because we were in line with the U.S.'s mission in the region and we were participating with an ally of the U.S. One thing we discussed last time is the kill list. One of the names that was on the list that I've seen is Huda Sarari, who's a female, a human rights lawyer. Um, Not on my list. So the list you have is something different. I would absolutely remember if that name was on the list. Did you know that after you left, the Emirati forces that you trained then trained Yemenis to conduct assassinations? You train people, you give people a tool, and how they choose to use it is not, really not your responsibility. So my personal feelings is unfortunate and war is always messy. But anytime there's conflict, there's going to be people that are hurt or killed that you wish weren't. 